I remember smiling the first time I heard someone say, please be patient, God's not finished with me yet. And maybe when we're not looking back and sighing, when we look forward, look to the future, then we realize it really is true. God is not done with us. God is at work in us to make something of us, make something with us and for us, which is way more than we could have asked or imagined. Something more beautiful, something more hopeful. So we can ask ourselves, who am I becoming? What am I becoming with God? If God is not finished with me, can I feel that? Sense it? Smell it in the air? A kind of restlessness, an excitement that God is up to something, is working on me, growing in me. God who has begun this work in us is not going to give up or stop halfway. Like Jesus at the wedding, where water became something more and better as a sign that with God, the best is yet to come. I can be patient with myself. I can listen to the whispers of God about what's next for me about where God is calling me. And it's true, God is not done with me yet. God's not done with me yet. God is not done with me yet. God is not done with me yet. So today we're going to have a look at our theme. The theme I've chosen is accepting your calling. Accepting your calling. And did you know that you were put on this earth to make a contribution? Did you know that? You weren't just created to consume resources to eat. For some of us, we really enjoy our eating. Or just to breathe or to occupy space. I believe that God created us to make a real difference in our world, in our lives. And I'm sure you're aware there are many best-selling books uh, that have been written to offer us advice on how we can get the most out of life. But that isn't the reason that God has made us. I believe that we were created to add to this life, not just to take from it. And when we start to understand the Bible, and I love this story, when we read the story of, uh, of Jonah, stories such as Jonah's one, uh, where there's also a big fish, we start to understand that God has created us to give something back to the world, to contribute to the world around us. And to do that well requires obedience and courage and commitment. And I know we're probably quick to criticize Jonah, but if we were put in his position, we might also have run away. So let's not become too heavy handed with Jonah. But it does require obedience and courage and commitment to know that God is with us every step of the way. Did you know that, church? God is with you, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're about to face. God has promised to be with us. And I believe that God has a calling over everyone, over every one of us, to participate in His plan of salvation. And I believe that God has called us to make a contribution. And what does that look like? A contribution of his love, his mercy, his justice, his hope, his forgiveness. This 
is what I believe is a key purpose for our lives. And it's called ministry. Ministry. And some others call it service. We are all called to ministry and to God's service. I love this image here of some of these, uh, these folk who have committed to going into officership. And today we're focusing on Candidate Sunday. For those of you who are not familiar with the term candidates, they are people who have stepped out in faith, who are accepting their call into the leadership within the Salvation Army. And so every year we have Candidate Sundays, a day when we are encouraged to consider God's calling on our own lives. What will that calling mean for us? What will it look like? Where will it take us? It's a day when we're encouraged to think about how the Salvation Army needs offices and territorial envoys, people who are willing to sign up and step out into a new ministry with God. Candidate Sunday is also an opportunity to encourage and to challenge those who are sensing that God is speaking to them about a specific calling He has on their lives. But I would go further and say that God's calling is not just about leadership. God calls a diversity of people to serve Him even behind the scenes. There's no job too small, no job too little. God has called people to work behind the scenes in ways that are essential to the benefit of the church and to the community. Oh, there's an old picture of me going back to when I was 19, believe it or not. Some say I haven't really changed all that much. But that's me at 19 in South Africa. And let me tell you a little bit about my experience, about God's calling on my life. When I was 19, I had a car accident. The incident in itself was traumatic. It wasn't very pleasant. Thankfully, I came out of the accident with minor injuries, but it did shake me up. It was as if God had given me a second chance in life, and I don't say that lightly. I really believe He gave me a second chance, which led me to ask some big questions. What is the meaning of my life? What legacy will I leave behind when I do eventually get taken up to be with the Lord? Am I living the life He has intended for me? Am I confident that I will go to heaven? And some will say, I've had some people say to me, oh, those are very deep questions, Dylan. Those are very sobering questions. But that's where I was in my life after this car accident. It was a real turning point for me in my life when I decided I'm going to fully commit my everything to Jesus, to making a real difference however I can. That's what I'd committed to. And since then, I have done my utmost to dedicate my life to serving Him. I have accepted my assignment. I have accepted my calling to live for Jesus and to serve Him with all that I am. But I would like to say that it's a daily decision. It wasn't just back when I was 19 years old. It's every day I wake up and I choose to live for Jesus. I have accepted my calling for Him. But in saying that, I've been on a journey, as I'm sure most of you have throughout your lives. And in some points, I've been reluctant to obey Him. I've been slow to obey Him. And I've had my own plans. I'll give you an example. Uh, after working for the Salvation Army in a homeless hostel, I applied for Cheshire Constabulary to become a police officer. Did you know that? I might have told some of you that. I passed all the assessments. I passed all the tests. But you know what came? There was a recruitment freeze and the door was firmly shut to me. All the while, Rachel, who sat behind me here, was reminding me that we are called into officership. We are called into leadership within the Salvation Army. And bless her, Rachel gave me the freedom to go and apply for that, that job in the police. But she said, if, if, if it's God's will, it will happen. If it's not God's will, the doors will close to you. Have you ever been in those situations in your lives? I think it's important to be open to the calling and to listen closely to what is God saying to you? What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? I do remember the shock on her face when I finally came to that same conclusion 
that yes, let's go into Bible college, let's go into William Booth College, let's become candidates. I remember the shock on her face when I agreed to go into training in London. But you know what, there was a real sense of freedom and peace that yes, it's going to be scary, whatever the future holds, but this is the right decision. In the book of Jonah, God has a clear plan and a purpose for this interesting character to go into the city of Nineveh to warn the people to change their ways, to repent or to face God's judgment. But what does Jonah do? We all know what he does. He runs away. He's reluctant to serve God in the way that has been requested of him. And we learn that Jonah ends up on a ship which experiences a terrible storm and he's thrown over by the sailors and he's swallowed up by this big fish. I know some of us say a big whale, a whale, or perhaps it just says a big fish. In Jonah 2, we find him praying within the smelly fish. It must be pitch dark. I imagine it's pitch dark. It must smell terrible. And he's praying. I don't know if he's on his knees. I don't know if he had much space to move within this fish. But he's, he's praying. And this is a prayer of thanksgiving, acknowledging he has been given a second chance. He is so grateful to God that his life has been spared. And I wonder if Jonah asked the same questions that I did after my, my car accident. An event that was pretty traumatic. An event that makes you reevaluate your direction and your meaning in life. Being swallowed by smelly giant fish will also do that. But in Jonah 2 verse 9, this is the key verse for me, Jonah makes a decision. This is what he says to God. I will offer sacrifices to you with songs of praise and I will fulfill all my vows for my salvation comes from the Lord alone. And after he made this commitment, the big fish spat him out. Some of the more dramatic versions says vomited him out onto the beach so that he could be free to honor his commitment, to live out his calling, to honor that promise he made to God. 2 Timothy 1 verse 9 says this, It is he who saved us and chose us for his holy work, not because we deserved it, but because that was his plan. The Bible tells us that God has saved us so that we can do his holy work. Now here is a subtle difference I discovered. We are saved so that we can do his holy work. We are not saved because of our service. We are saved for service. That's why we have, I don't have my tunic on today, my, my, my jacket, but we have the S's, don't we, on our tunics. The two S's mean we are saved to serve. Commissioner Kenneth Hodder is quoted saying this. People often ask me, what do the S's mean? Well, in the Salvation Army, we know that they mean we are saved to serve. We are saved by the power of Jesus Christ for the purpose of serving the needs of others without discrimination. That is what the Salvation Army has always been about. Pastor Rick Warren in his book, the Purpose Driven Life says this, in God's kingdom you have a place, a purpose, a role and a function to fulfill. This gives your life great significance and value. And I would go on to say that if you feel like your life is missing some sort of significance or value, then you are missing out on the plan God has for your life. Now some people think that we are called by God when we are called by God, it's something like this. It looks like we are missionaries or pastors of a church and other full-time church workers. But the Bible says that every Christian is called to service. Every one of us has a calling over our lives. God has given every one of his people gifts in order that they can encourage and serve. And in 1 Corinthians 12, the Apostle Paul tells the early church, that the Holy Spirit gives each Christian special gifts and abilities so that they can serve him. There's a wide range of gifts. Wise counsel, 
clear understanding, simple trust, healing the sick, and even miraculous acts. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 says that the Holy Spirit gives gifts to every Christian as a means to help the entire church for the common good. We all have a calling. The Bible makes it clear that God is calling every disciple to contribute their gifts, their talents, their abilities for the greater good. He is calling you and me to make a real difference. A real difference. But remember, there's no small act of service. It all matters. As Rachel was saying earlier to the young people, it all matters. What did you say earlier? It was, um, it's not, nothing's wasted. That's what she said. Nothing is wasted. Everything matters. There's no small act of service. At the end of our lives, we stand before our maker. We will be standing before God one day and he's, and he's going to evaluate how well we served him with our lives. Romans 14 verse 12 says this, that each of us will have to give an account of ourselves to God. Think about the implications of that day. One day God will compare how much time and energy we spent on ourselves compared with that of what we invested in serving him and serving others. At that point, all our excuses for self-centeredness will sound hollow. I was too busy, Lord. I had my own goals. I was too preoccupied with work or having fun or preparing for my retirement. All these excuses, God will respond to them saying, sorry, I'm paraphrasing here, sorry, wrong answer. I created you, I saved you, and I called you and commanded you to live a life of service. Which part of that did you not understand? Romans 2 verse 8 warns us, but for those who are selfishly ambitious and self-seeking and disobedient to the truth, but responsive to wickedness, there will be wrath and indignation. It's a sobering warning that for us. So this one should say Mark 8 verse 35. This gives us a reality check. For whoever wishes to save his life in this world will eventually lose it through death. But whoever loses his life in this world for my sake and the Gospels will save it from the consequences of sin and separation from God. That's the amplified version. It explains it very nicely for us. It's a big step, isn't it, to lose your life to hand it over, to surrender it to God. But that is what we are called to do. Again, Rick Warren shares this sentiment. He says, if you are not serving, you're just existing. Because life is meant for ministry. God wants you to learn to love and serve others unselfishly. Unfortunately, Jonah made some very selfish decisions. He ignored God. He avoided the calling on his life. He ran in the opposite direction. And this got him in a pickle. Well, he actually got himself inside a big fish underwater. Perhaps we can learn from Jonah's mistakes today. Jonah made his own plans. He rebelled because, I believe, perhaps because of fear, stubbornness, claiming that God was asking way too much of him. But running only got him into more trouble. And we see this change of heart in him in Jonah 2 verse 9. I will offer sacrifices to you with songs of praise and I will fulfill all my vows for my salvation comes from the Lord alone. The first thing that he did, he surrendered his will. He offered up his life as a living sacrifice to God. The second thing I think he did he did so joyfully and willingly. Jonah 2 verse 9 says he offers his sacrifices with songs of praise. Now, complaining and grumbling, it reveals something about our hearts. If we're serving God and we're complaining all the time on our lips and we're moaning about it, perhaps we need to revisit what's in our hearts. 
We must live for God with joyful hearts. We must serve him with joyful hearts. And the third thing, Jonah makes a commitment to keep his promise of sacrificial and selfless living. That's what he vowed to do. That was his commitment. Thankfully, I had a second chance to make some well-needed adjustments in my life after my car accident. Thankfully, Jonah also had a second chance to make things right. What about you today? What about you? Do you need to make some adjustments? Are there some sacrifices that seem a little bit too much? God's asking a little bit too much of you. Do you need to make sure that you are surrendering your best to him? Do you need to make sure you are serving with a joyful attitude? Are you giving him everything from all of your heart? And are you confident that when you do eventually stand before your maker, you're confident that you've made your very best efforts to accept his calling over your life? You've, you've made your best efforts. There's no doubt in your mind. Those are my ponderings from Jonah chapter 2. Are you ready? Are you willing to accept the calling that he has over your life? To help us reflect, the Salvation Army has produced this lovely song. And I encourage you to listen to the words, to think about what was shared today. But I encourage you to accept your calling, to step out in faith, to live your life wholeheartedly for him this week, this season. Make those adjustments that are needed. Spend some time in prayer as you listen. Feel free to come forward and pray here up front. But I encourage you to respond. Accept your calling.
Lord, we just echo those words from that song in our prayer. We want to come to the Saviour. Help us not to delay. Here, Lord, we know in your word you've shown us the way. Here in our midst, we know that you're standing amongst us, Lord, today. And you're saying, come. Lord, help us to be joyful. and Look forward to that joy when we do meet you in heaven. Because we know we, are, we have lived our lives pure and free, honouring you. Lord, help us to accept the calling you have over our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.